What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another episode of What to Buy on eBay. And before I begin, I've got a channel reminder. This Friday, we've got a live stream, and it's going to be a pretty special one, so I hope that you'll tune in. We have Boss Bounty coming on the channel, as well as Chris W. from Rogue Five Toys, as well as Five Idiots Talking Toys. And Chris is going to do an unboxing that you cannot miss. It's one of the rarest Star Wars figures that's out there. And, uh, you know, I, all I can say is you need to tune in because it's going to be pretty special. And I think we'll probably parlay that into a discussion not only of the Hasbro PulseCon announcements in terms of the new TVC that will be released. We'll get Tim's thoughts on that and maybe just talk generally about the market. And then, of course, we'll need you guys to ask some questions. And what you want to talk about is up to you. But I'm going to try my best to kind of keep things in order as we go. But we'll do an unboxing and then dig into some TVC and, and then any questions you have. So it should be a fun hour or so. And it's this coming Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 8 p.m. UK time. I hope that you all will tune in. Now, I've got some pretty awesome items here on what to buy. Some of them are very, very pricey, but very rare. Some of them are not. We've got trading cards, vintage collection, vintage Kenner stuff, Palatoy Tri Logo, as you see. A pretty, pretty much a holy grail within the Tri Logo uh, collection there. And, uh, I, you know, let's just go ahead and dig right into it. The first one we've got is an Oromarco Prune Face VC114 Unpunched. Very, very clean. This one just got listed today, Monday. Uh, October 3rd and there's already five watchers on it. It's $100 plus $7.98 shipping. It's the US card and it looks extremely clean overall and you know we've documented some on the channel that have sold right around $100 if not up to $125 and I think given the condition of this one this is probably a pretty fair price and obviously it is since five watchers have already kind of uh, or three watchers in the last 24 hours so it must have gone on on Sunday late but uh, you know, I think this is a pretty fair price. Again, with all of these items, make sure that you vet the sellers. I haven't done that with any of these. Make sure you really zoom in on some of the photos to make sure you get, you know, what you're, uh, what you're buying is what you want. Uh, here's another one that I really like. Uh, this is the Topps uh, 1977 Trading Card Series, Series 5, number 296. R2-D2 is abducted by the Jawas, and it kind of perfectly captures... The moment after the Jawas blast R2-D2 with their electronic or electric blaster shotgun, so to speak. And it's graded PSA 9. Pretty awesome card for a 1977 card back. You know, this is like, what, 40 plus years old. And it's listed for 72 U.S. dollars, which is 99.99 Canadian plus shipping. And it's also make an offer. So I think that's a really nice card, really high grade, you know, 1977 early tops cards for that kind of price in a PSA 9 mint grade. That's a pretty good price in my mind. So I would take a look at that. Uh, next up, I've got a UKG 85% Boba Fett, but this one has the V5 Imperial Blaster along with a Taiwan Fett. So a pretty desirable variant. You can see on the label there that UKG very kindly uh, labeled it V5 Blaster. And uh, the, the figure itself looks to be in pretty immaculate condition. A little bit of paint missing on the wrist gauntlets, but, uh, you know, that's just a factory issue, it looks like. A um, little bit of chipping maybe around the visor, but, you know, this is listed for 350 pounds, which is 390 U.S. dollars. It's also make an offer. There are nine watchers on it so far. Now, for me, it's a little bit cost prohibitive because you've got to add an extra, let's call it 10 to 12 percent because of the global shipping program. But for those of you in the U.K., uh, who can avoid the global shipping program. This is not a bad price as it is, and it's also make an offer. Maybe you can get it closer to 300 uh, pounds, uh, somewhere in the middle there. Somewhere between 300 and 350 is probably a pretty fair price for that beautiful figure, and this has got the brand new case style from UKG. Next up, we got a PSA 10 Star Wars living set, Lobot, the major domo for Lando's Bespin Cloud City, and, uh, you know, a Gem Mint 10, and it's $37.95 with 399 shipping. Now, I also did receive an offer from him if memory serves. It's already expired, so I don't know what that price was. I want to say it was around 33 or $34. So, maybe if you watch this, you can get it even cheaper. But I do love these Star Wars living set cards. Uh just it really kind of gives a retro feel. It kind of harkens back to those 1977 Tops cards like we just saw with the Jawa. And uh you know, 37.95 is not bad at all because 
you know, if you look at PSA's pricing, unless you send in 50 at a time to get their bulk pricing of $22 per card in grading costs, you got to pay 30 bucks a card plus shipping to and back. So $37.95 plus $3.99 shipping, that's really not much further above uh, the grading costs for a normal size bash. Not many of us are going to be sending in 50 cards at once. I know I'm not. So uh, to get that one in a Gym Mint 10 for $37.95 plus $3.99 shipping, you really can't beat that price as it is, but maybe you watch it and he makes you an offer. Uh, next up, this is an interesting one. I don't know what to make about this price. It's already got seven watchers on it, so it's got to be pretty close. But this is the Imperial Troop Transporter, and this is the 1979 Star Wars box, so the original kind of issue. Um, and the box looks to be in really fantastic shape. It also includes the instruction sheet. It's advertised as complete with stickers applied. Keep that in mind. But it's listed for $300, and I received an offer, as you can see up here, for $270 plus $1470 shipping. Again, it's got seven watchers on it, and the troop transporter itself looks to be in pretty immaculate condition. As you can see, some of the stickers might have a little bit of curling going on, but that's a great price. Now, we've documented some without the box or without any of the paperwork that have sold closer to $200. So to get the box with it plus the paperwork at $270 from that offer, um, you know, again, you can make an offer even lower than that and see what he does. But uh, that's that seems like a pretty close, It's it's got to be pretty close to market value at $270. So maybe you pick it up for, you know, $250-ish. Um, but that's a really nice example of a very hard-to-find item, especially the box in the condition that it's in. Next up, we got another Gem Mint 10 grade from PSA, Bo-Katan Crease, Star Wars Living Set. I've got the Clone Wars kind of animated style version of this card, but I don't have this one yet. So this one's on my short list just to pair it with my Clone Wars card. Now, this seller has had four of them available. One of them has sold. There's still three available. It's $75 plus $540 shipping, but it's also make an offer. And the sales prices have been around six in an auction have been around sixty six to seventy dollars. So this price is pretty close. It's got thirteen watchers already on it, but maybe you make an offer at sixty five and just see what he says. And that would be right on the money in terms of where this card has sold in a PSA ten at auction. So really nice card. I, I love the way it looks, and uh, that's definitely on my short list to kind of pair with my Clone Wars animated style Bo Katan. Uh, next up, this is a great one. I think this is a fantastic deal here. This is. Uh, VC-17 General Grievous. This is the retail release with the free Boba Fett mail-away offer uh, with the rocket-firing Fett. It is punched, but it looks to be in very, very clean condition. Always tough to tell when it, when the photos are inside the star case, but a little bit of edge wear on the back of the card in the upper left and right corners, but uh, it looks really clean. Maybe you ask the seller for some extra photos. I kindly received this as a gift from Mike Chan, uh, a channel supporter, Patreon supporter. So thank you so much, Mike, for this. But uh, this one's listed for $110. It's got 10 watchers on it already, free shipping. And it does ship inside a star case, so you know it's going to arrive safe and sound. But maybe you ask the seller for uh, some photos outside of the star case just to confirm it's kind of an 85 grade. But uh, that seems like a really fair price uh, given the condition of that one. Uh, next up, this one is at auction, so... You know, I don't usually include stuff at auction, but I think that there's a potential here to get up, to get this vintage R5-D4 for a really good price. The starting bid is $19.95. Nobody has bid yet. It's $9.20 shipping, so let's call it a $30 starting price. But it looks super, super clean, probably like 80-grade condition. A little bit of scuffing, a little bit of damage to the sticker, but overall, this is a really nice example. The chrome... Uh, below the head there is in great shape. You can see a little bit of scuffing on the sticker, but it looks 100% legitimate, and I, I think that that's a really good starting price. Again, there's 11 watchers on it with no bids yet, and it ends in five days and nine hours as of the making of this video, so maybe you pick it up for $40 or so. I think that's a really good price and would probably grade out at about an 80, maybe an 80 plus if depending on who you send it to. I think with AFA, AFA is really strict, folks. So I, I think they would probably get an 80 there. But maybe with CAS, you get an 80 plus with it. I don't know. Uh, but it's it, it looks to be in really great condition overall. Great paint. Look at the paint on the top of the head there. And uh, it's the 1977 date stamp as well. So let's see if we can get a zoom in of that. Hard to see there. But maybe if you really take a look at the photos, you can get a better look. But it looks like it's the 1977 date stamp. And that's actually the harder variant to find. For the r5d4 most of them are dated 1978 so to get the 1977 hong kong 
uh, for let's call it 40 to 50 bucks. I think that's a really good price. So good luck on that if you decide to bid on it. But the paint looks super clean. That orange paint on the head looks great. Uh, next up, I've got another vintage card. This is a 1977 yellow card back, Series 3, PSA 9. And I, I love the title of this card, Luke Attacked by a Strange Creature. Just everything about it screams 1977. Luke looks like me after I get like 10 packages in from the mailman. And instead of a slimy kind of tentacle around my neck, it's my wife's hands around my neck, strangling me for spending money. So <laughs> this is a great card though, PSA 9, and uh, the, the list price on it is $95, but it's make an offer, make an offer on that one. So I, you know, if you can get that around, I'd, I'd say most of the 77 cards, Series 3 in a PSA 9, most of them sell around 80 bucks. So I think that you'd have to come down just a little bit off that price, but that's a really great card and a very high grade. Uh, next up, I've got the original issue, Shea Vizsla. And this has the Darth Maul offer. It's unpunched, and it looks very, very clean. And it's listed, buy it now, for $149.99. Uh, that price seems really fair. The only defect I found was on the back of the card, top left. And if I, if I already mentioned this one, I apologize. But that, this one looks really, really nice. And you got to remember that this card back pre-reissue prices, this was going for $250 to $350 ungraded. And graded, I saw as high as four fifty, and this was less than six months ago. So, I think to get an unpunched original issue, uh, Shea Vizsla U.S. card, I, I think that's a pretty good price, one fifty. And this is something that we we're going to talk more about with Tim on the live stream on Friday at three p.m. Eastern time. Uh, is that is the fact that Hasbro has announced some more reissues, specifically for a lot of Jabba's goons, Jabba's henchmen. Uh, it looks like Klaatu and Weequay and a few others are coming back. So, you know, it's unfortunate for those of us that have spent a lot of money on TVC 1.0 versions because typically after that reissue gets announced, the TVC 1.0 version drops like a rock in price. Uh, but I, I do want to talk more to, to Tim about that and maybe ask him what he thinks the next uh, cards will be re reissued next year. And, uh, and for those of us to proceed with caution, so to speak, on any TVC expensive 1.0s. Next up, I've got another Darth Vader number three, CGC 9.8, first appearance of Dr. Aphra, BT1, and Triple Zero. This one's listed for $320 plus $12 shipping. It's already got 18 watchers on it. It's a buy it now situation. Seven watchers in the last 24 hours. This is start, starting to creep up a little bit. You know, this got down to about 275, but now I'm starting to see prices more between 300 and 325. Uh, so maybe you watch this and he makes you an offer if it has if it doesn't sell. Uh, $300 and under is a steal in my mind for this book. Now, there are a lot of uh, copies of this book in a 9.8 on the census. Several of you have reached out and told me the numbers, and the numbers were pretty stratospheric. I don't, I don't remember, again, what the numbers were, but it was like 6,000 copies, something crazy. So that's going to keep the price down a little bit, but I do think we're going to see Dr. Aphra sooner rather than later on uh, Disney Plus and some sort sort of Star Wars content. Whether it happens or not, I don't know, but I, I think it's going to happen. And I would really recommend you pick up this book sooner rather than later. But this one's got 18 watchers on it. I expect it to sell, but maybe you watch it. And if you are not too worried about missing out on it, watch it and see if the seller makes an offer of 300 bucks or so. Next up, I've got another card back, and I love this card. This is a 1980s ESB release uh, from the Tops line, and this is graded PSA 9. And it's titled Gruesome Fate, and it shows Han Solo in Carbonite. More on him in a little while towards the end of this video. But this is a great, great card. I love this card. I love the title of it, everything about it. And it's $55 with $4.95 shipping. That's a great price for a PSA 9 card that is 42 years old. So I would take a look at that. Uh, next up, I've got an interesting one. This is an AFA 80 Ugnot 45 back. It's graded... Again, AFA 80, the, the subscores are all uh, 80 grades. Card, blister, and figure all got 80. And this is the Star Wars Display Arena. Clear blister. It is punched with a, a Lionel price sticker, so keep that in mind. He does not show the back of the card, so maybe ask for some uh, extra photos. It's listed for $700 with $15 shipping. Uh, there's six watchers on it, but it's also make an offer. I think if you can pick this up for $600 and under, ideally $550, but I think that's probably too low, quite honestly. Uh, but if you can pick it up for closer to $600, I think that's a great price for a beautiful card 
that Ugnot just looks fantastic. Clear blister with the Star Wars Display Arena. Uh, next up, I've got a modern card. This is a 2017 Master and Padawan, and it shows uh, Ahsoka Tano fighting Darth Vader, and this was in an episode of Rebels, Star Wars Rebels, the cartoon show on Disney+. Plus. I actually watched this episode fairly recently, and it was a monster of an episode. Um, I really recommend uh, you, you check out that series if you haven't. Graded Gem Mint 10, and uh, this one's listed for $99 with $4.50 shipping. There are several watchers on it, although it does not display that on uh, on the actual listing, but I know for a fact there's three or four watchers on this. It's also make an offer, but uh, anything Ahsoka in a high grade like this, and, and this captures a pretty pivotal moment uh, within the Star Wars Rebels series where Ahsoka fights Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader in a pretty epic duel. So uh, that's a beautiful card. Uh, next up, I think this is a great deal too, especially for you Australian viewers down there. Uh, this is a Revenge of the Sith VC-20 Yoda. It's unpunched, and uh, it looks to be pretty clean, pretty clean, and it's listed for $72 U.S. or $112 Australian dollars. Beautiful unpunched card with the prototype FET offer. A little bit of edge wear on the left-hand side of the card, but uh, overall a very, very clean example of the U.S. card. It does have a little bit of curl that I think would need to come out in a star case, but uh, what a beautiful card. And it's got 12 watchers on it already, and it's also make an offer. We've documented several of these that have been selling in the $80 to $90 price range. So if you're in the U uh, excuse me, if you're in Australia, this is not a bad item at all, and pretty fairly priced in my mind. Speaking of Han and Carbonite, as I alluded to earlier, this seller has the Palatoy Tri logo Han ungraded, but the card looks immaculate. And then he also has a graded Power of the Force. And let's take a look at some better photos here. Uh, so here it is. This is an AFA yellowed 80 Power of the Force unpunched plus an unpunched tri logo Han Solo Carbonite. So that is a, a just a neutron bomb of, of a listing here with two beautiful examples. Now the Palatoy tri logo does have some creasing around the hang tab there. Probably at best, probably a 75, but more likely a 70 plus, somewhere in that ballpark. But you're also getting an AFA-80 Power of the Force version of Han in Carbonite, and it's listed for $1,100, and I think that price is really fair. We just documented on the channel an AFA-80 Plus Palatoy Tri-Logo Han in Carbonite that sold for this exact same price, if not higher. And to get both of them for $1,100, it's six watchers on it already, plus it's make an offer. I mean, the list price right now, in my mind, is pretty fair. And if you can pick those both up for anywhere close to that list price, I think that's a really, really fair offer. It's $1,100 plus $44.88 shipping. And now we're going to dig into some more expensive items. I have no idea if these are fair prices or not, but I wanted to show them on the channel. And they're both Jawas. The first one is the very exclusive Toll Toys Vinyl Cape Jawa. This was only available in Australia and New Zealand. It is an AFA 60, so it's low grade. But this is a very, very hard to find Toll Toys Jawa. It's at auction right now, but it's been listed several times, so I feel comfortable showing this. It's listed for $28.93 US dollars or $4,500 Australian dollars, plus another $64 US shipping or $100. Australian dollar shipping. So again, it's three thousand dollars, but this is a much more hard to find vinyl cape Jawa versus the standard Hong Kong vinyl cape Jawa. And I, I gotta believe that that price, given what vinyl cape Jawas have done over the last six to nine months, I gotta believe that this price is pretty fair. Anyway, it's listed right now in an auction, and it ends in eight days and nineteen hours as of the making of this video. And it does include the CIB certi certificate of authentication uh, from AFA. Beautiful, beautiful item. Now we've got the Holy Grail to finish things off. And that is a Palatoy Tri-Logo Jawa AFA 75. This has been on the market for a while now. It's got 45 watchers on it. And he's dropped the price here recently. Right now it's listed for $6,495. But other than the General Maydeen, I would classify this Tri-Logo Jawa as one of the holy grails for the Jawas, or excuse me, for the Palatoy Tri-Logo Mint on Card. Again, it's an AFA 75. The subscores are 70, 75, 90. Made in Taiwan, archival case. You cannot do much better than this. And if you've got deep pockets, I don't remember the last time I've seen this for sale anywhere, Facebook or anywhere. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know what it's worth, but it's got to make an offer uh, button on there. 
and there's 45 watchers. So I got to believe it's getting pretty close to market value, but what an epic, epic item. And it even has the KB Toys price sticker. It is curling a little bit, so that's a negative, and it is punched. But, uh, you know, if, if you are trying to put together a full run of mint-on-card Palatoy Tri-Logos, the General Maydeen is probably $10,000 plus at this point. And then this Jawa, this is probably the second on the list in terms of most expensive Tri-Logos. I'm sure I'm forgetting one, and someone's going to correct me. But in my mind, this is a pretty epic item, and uh, you, you just don't see this come up for sale very often. I, I don't, honestly, it's been probably, I remember one on Facebook, and this was probably eight years ago. Someone had one listed. It might have been more than that. Uh, I think it was Jeff Jacob, uh, who's got a pretty incredible collection. He had one listed uh, on on Facebook uh, a long, long time ago. And that's the last time I remember one of these being for sale publicly. I'm sure they trade traded hands privately, but uh, they just do not come up regularly, especially in pretty high grade. So take a look at that if you've got deeper pockets than I do. I hope that you enjoyed this What to Buy episode. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters. They get my videos 24 hours early. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, it's patreon.com slash actionfiguregrader. Thanks again, and don't forget about the live stream on Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. UK, UK Time, and I'll be back soon.